I can't tell if that's right or not. Why does that look weird to me? Did it send out the wrong notification? Oh my god, it did, didn't it? One sec. Okay, maybe not? I think it sent the wrong notification out to Twitch, which may be my fault. What's up, Calixto? How we doing? Uh, you caught me very quickly. So let's finish making some posts here. What is the song? And I don't like it. Eh, it's all right, I guess. There's songs that are in this playlist that were from like when I very first started streaming. Uh, and my taste on what I like to have in the background while I'm doing streams has changed at this point, I think. Hi, Hops. Hi, buddy. What's up, bud? Do you want to be on screen? Do you want to be on screen? Anon, what's up? Hops. Oh, God. That was close to family. Hops, touch. Hi, bud. I don't know if they can see you or not there. I use a new camera. Or not a new camera. I just changed where my camera is. Let's be clear. I can't really angle it down. Hops, touch. There you go. There you go. Okay, one second. This music's really loud in my ear. Is it super loud for you guys or is it just loud for me? That's the question. Why, why does it do this? I feel like half the time I stream, I just have to fix my settings. It says it should be loud to all of us. So I'm gonna turn it down. Because it should just be background music while I do other stuff. Cool. All right. I, I got some new equipment, so which will help me for both actual videos and then my random one off streams, um, including a prompter, which is why I can read chat and look right at the camera. It's really cool. Uh, what it also will let me do is be better at reading my scripts and looking right at the camera. Plus, it's useful for a bunch of other stuff. All right, let's make the let's make the Twitter posts. I am live. Hello, we're going to talk about the commentary discourse. Which I don't know if everybody has seen, I think I'm overestimate what discourse on Twitter has gone to other social media. But we're going to talk about it anyways, because I think it does lead to an interesting discussion. Uh, and then I have some thoughts on Rivals 2, based on what we've seen at other tournaments that have happened. And then I'm just going to hang out and chill. Because why not? Why not? How are you guys doing? How are you feeling today? It is snowing here and really wet and rainy. So we are just chilling and I can't upload my newest video yet. <laughs> I'm just kind of waiting.
Am I live on Twitch right now? That's the real question. I think I am. It should. Yeah, OK, I'm, I'm live on both. I'm live on both. We're good. We're good. Sorry, I am bad at talking out loud and streaming. Or I'm, I'm sorry, I'm bad at talking out loud and typing at the same time. Holy crap, I can't do either right now. Does this lead to the right thing? That, no, it doesn't. Why did it do .tv? There we go. Weird. That was very strange, actually. Wait, I don't like. Pardon me? Pardon me? All right, I'm about to hear myself. Pardon me? Oh, hello. We're going through the headphones. Whatever, I'm just gonna go to the main YouTube. I don't care. That feels easier. Hey. Thank you. Thank you. How are you doing? Uh, it's only showing me part of your name. One second, let me fix that. Salt in something. <laughs> we'll get there. Give me one sec. Salt in your eye, six out of 10. Did I ask how you're doing? I'm sorry. That's all right. Not every day is the best day. I feel that. All right, I've posted. Now I can actually focus on chat again. Uh, yeah, I changed how some of my setup works, so I need to like. Yeah, not probably seven. So just like doing all right. Not the best day, not like a terrible day. Honestly, I feel the same way right now. That's how I definitely would describe myself. No, I switched my setup, which means I can look right at chat and read it, which is sick. But it also means that I am I still feel like the music's really loud, and I cannot tell if that's actually true or not. Uh, but it also means that I'm like, I've lost where some of my normal OBS stuff is. So let me figure out if I can fix my activity feed. That's what I really want here. It's a good way to do this. The activity feed being where I can see who is followed and who is joined. At least on the Twitch side, I can only get that to I can't have like Twitch and YouTube up, though. I can have both chat. Music is indeed a little loud. Thank you. This just never. Goes the way I want it to. Let me know if that's better. I didn't move it down that much. What's up, Helix? 
Also, hello, Luke Miller. I feel weird that sometimes YouTube chat is just person's actual government name. <laughs> Some people have their names changed. Other people, I'm like, oh, that's just your real name. <laughs> because it doesn't like automate it to like a gamer tag or something. And that's just part of Twitch culture is that I'm so used to talking to chat and being like, what's up, salt in your eye? How are we doing, Helix? And then I see like Luke Miller. It's like, oh, OK, fine. All right. Um, hopefully music's a little bit better. Sorry, I was trying to fix stuff. Like I said, I, I changed. I got it. Cool new stream toy, which is part of why I'm live. Uh, other part is that I do have the next video finished up. Uh, I tend to not stream when I'm like heavy at work in the middle of a more involved video, but I'm trying to be better at splitting up my really involved videos and then my smaller videos. And I, I think I'm going to explain what that means in a sec. I, Luke Miller, have switched to Twitch because I want my gamer tag back. Hello, textbook. <laughs> yeah, my my personal opinion, and it's actually one of the reasons that I do want to multi-stream, um, not just because uh, I, I've noticed that when I stream, same, my name is Calixto on YouTube. Wait, <laughs> so we've had two different people pop up in my YouTube chat and then switch to Twitch chat. That's really funny. Uh, no, my, my opinion on all of that anyways is I personally usually watch streams on YouTube if there's both. Uh, that would explain why my Twitch numbers are starting to go up and my YouTube ones are going down as we speak. Uh, I usually watch on YouTube if it's like a big event or if it's like a large streamer. But if it's a smaller creator, I tend to watch on Twitch. And I think that's because I'll, I'm way more likely to chat if it's a friend or somebody who's not like inundated with messages. Uh, and because of that, I get that weird like Twitch is better for chatting. YouTube is better for watching. That's my opinion, at least. It's part of the reason I'm just going to offer both. Uh, what on earth was I doing? I get distracted. I don't have my ADHD meds right now because the national shortage sucks. So I will just forget what I'm doing. Also, part of the reason the video is taking a while to come out. Um, I've only ever used YouTube for P plus streams. Uh, I started multi streaming a couple months ago. I also only stream three or four times at most a month, though I'm going to try to do that a little bit more. Um, oh, I remember what I was saying. Uh, let's make sure everything else is good first. I wanted to figure out activity feed, which is the like tells me what people have done or like what people are following. But I don't have a way to I want that to be here, but then I won't be able to read the rest of chat and I'm, I'm aware of that. How do I, okay, how do I do this? How do I make this better? Because I, I won't be able to see enough messages this way. Okay, all of my options suck. I'm just gonna deal with this. I just have to be better. Um, yeah, so I mentioned it. My, my current video or the next video, I guess, isn't it's done, but I can't make it live yet uh, because uh, a cool thing. I have my first sponsor ever on a video. Uh, I've done some smaller sponsorships for like direct signups where it's like whoever buys. I haven't done a HelloFresh one, but like I've been offered before that kind of thing. Like whoever buys this gets whatever. Uh, and this is the first one where they're like, no, we're just going to pay you money. Pay you money and send you some product. It's not a lot of money. I'm, I'm not like paying rent on this, uh, but it's the first place that's like, yeah, we just want to pay you to do a sponsorship um, from a place I think is super dope. I I don't know why I'm hiding it. It's not like a secret. Um, I just I feel I want the, the actual ad to go out before. I'm just like, I'm also going to share about you on Twitch because they didn't pay me for that. Uh, but they do have to like, OK, the ads that you put in for them which I knew is a thing. Uh, and unfortunately, I sent I finished the video up on Friday. And when you f send it to them, obviously no one's 
and I'm not asking them to. They're not working on the weekends. So I haven't gotten an answer back on like, is it okayed? Though uh, I will upload it as soon as I do. Um, this video won't go out to just members right away. Wisely with the sponsor, let's go. What's up, Angus? One sec. What is the new message request? Oh, God. I use the word stream in a tweet and I'm getting bot DMs. Cool. Beard, who am I going to main? I assume you're talking about rivals, uh, which I can talk about in a bit. I want to finish this up. Like I said, ADHD meds are in back order, which means I am very easily distracted and you guys can definitely take advantage of that. Uh, for anybody who's not aware, I do multi streaming, so you'll be able to see it on both Twitch and YouTube. Uh, only Twitch shows up on screen, but I can talk to both. Uh, also, yes, Beard. So yeah, it's just a sponsor. They just have to okay the ad. I'm 100% sure the ad will be okayed. Uh, I have friends that have done sponsors with them that have done much more out there stuff. Uh, but it's also one of those, like I've I've said for a while, beard product sponsor one. I mean, I've literally looked, I am not big enough, but I've said if I could do like any products, I like the idea of doing products that aren't related to the things that I play. So like, for sure, I'd be like, yeah, if Empress wants to like work with me to sell Empress Nanos or like a, a key, a, not a keyboard manufacturer, like that kind of thing, like I'll do that. But I think it's much more interesting and stuff that I appreciate when creators do. <laughs> Talk to me while I do the dishes. OK, I also need to do the dishes. So thanks for the reminder. Um, I've said before, I think a, a coffee sponsorship would be sick. Um, I could totally see like I know enough about coffee that I would want to be involved with like the roasting process. If 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 I was able to like choose a flavor profile for a coffee, I would I could even just not sell any and just have it myself. I am here. What's up? Um, so yeah, coffee, beard care. I use beard products. I, I do. A, I actually do, do a lot. I have beard combs. Uh, I think that would be a more niche thing, but it'd be fun. Um, and then I like style and fashion stuff. Uh, so I yeah, the the one that I took is actually a clothing company. So I'm excited about that. Uh, pour over guy. Yeah. I use a pure over, which is like an all glass system, but I used to have a Chemex and I've done other pour over stuff before. I worked at craft coffee shops when I was in between jobs previously, instead of now, where I'm in between jobs and doing YouTube. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a, it's a clothing company, so I'm I'm pumped about that. They just have to okay it, and then I can make the video live. Um, because it's been over a month since I've uploaded a video, I'm not going to make it members only right away, unless it like. If I get the OK past like seven at night and I'm like, I just want to upload it in the morning, maybe I'll make it members only for like 12 hours. Uh, but that's just because it's been so long. Um, if I was uploading like a video a week, then yeah, I would want to have it be members only for a day because that's one of the bonuses that you people have, you know, helped me. What did I miss? Do we have a sponsor? We do uh, not on the stream on the next YouTube video. Uh, it is into the AM. They do actually very good quality clothes, so I'm excited about that. We won? Yeah. Are you going to Combo Breaker this year? I am. Um, I am like 95% sure I'll be doing commentary. Oh, they're in Walt Vince? Yeah. Uh, Walt was the one I asked him when I got the email. It was like, hey, is this legit? Is this good? Like, I've, I've seen their clothes before and I know that they're good. And I've just been like, is is this a legit partnership, though? Not a, not just a legit product. And he's like, yeah, super good. They're really easy to work with. Give Hobbs a treat. All right. One sec. Usually I have the treats at my desk and I don't right now. Hobbs. Hobbs, touch. Where are you? 
was in his kennel, you probably woke him up. Let's back up. Hops, touch. Yes, sit. Sit. Yes. Are you in screen? You're not in screen. I'm sorry. Touch. Sit. Yes, now that people can see you. There you go. There you go. I can almost money match wisely. I will be clear the money matching was for Twitch subs. And now that I'm not doing Twitch streaming nearly as often, I don't. <laughs> I I haven't thought about the fact that that is up still, so I should think that through. Hi, bud. Mike makes him money match me 18 times in a row. That's so you just get a year of free Twitch subs for me. Because basically the money match was I, I gift a sub or I you purchase one, but I don't stream nearly as much now and I'm way more focused on YouTube, so I should think of that. Not real money. Yeah, I'm. I, if someone does the money match, I'm down to make that just to play me in a best of five. Um, but for a good reason, I missed what that was. God, that that actually be so funny if Saber just took over one of my streams and used all of his channel points. Oh, you said I woke him up. Yeah, he wanted a treat. We had just, I just let him out, so I was surprised he was in his kennel already. Um, yeah, if if you just took over my stream to make me fight you 18 times in a row, it'd actually be really funny. It'd be so funny. And you could do it between different games. You could do it in a lot of stuff. Another treat? All right. I'm pretty sure I have that where it, like, maxes out at five for a stream. Hops. Hubs. All right. Hubs, touch. Let's get you in frame here. Touch. Touch. Yes, good boy. There you go. My camera field of view is narrower, so I have to be a lot more careful to make sure he's in view. <laughs> he's so cute. Yeah, he's great. Those are his toys in the background, too. He hasn't had dinner yet, so when I feed him, I'm fully planning on. I have a dog toy that's just a D20, but like a big rubber thing that you put dog food in and they just roll it around. And I'm probably just going to do that, then put the camera on him while he eats. Uh, Cause I'm not ashamed to use my dog for content. Uh oh, what have I been tagged? Don't do this to me. Uh, I'm not gonna read this. I just need to learn to ignore notifications while I'm live. In a weird way, I am. That was not a a people know me kind of thing. That was just a someone actually was having a conversation and wanted to ask my opinion. But I do get them now where it's just people will like DM me and post and it's just like, I don't actually know you. Not that I don't. It's people that have interacted with me, but it is some level of parasocial, which is kind of strange. Um, yeah, so I was saying I'm just waiting on that video. Um, I think it's really good. It's a different style than I've done before, so I'm excited about that. It's a melee one. Um, and I haven't done a bigger melee video since starting to focus on YouTube more. So that should also be cool. But yeah, you guys should guess that up. I will for sure share it, obviously. Um, let me I can give you a teaser on what it's about. Do I have a screenshot? I don't. I mean, I have the thumbnail, but I don't. That seems boring. Just doing a thumbnail. I can't find it now. Whatever. Too bad. Too bad. Melee. Yeah. So I think this one's really good. 
Uh, and then I'm going to be doing some more videos that are about like shorter topics, not that are like less important, uh, but that are things like, wait, Pingus, when did you sub? Oh, you've been subbed for a bit now. Thank you. I didn't. I swear it wasn't on your name before. OK, it was guy. Yeah, I had a great time at Mixfest. I'm going to try to go to more of the Wednesday tournaments when I can. Um, even if just for commentary, I want to get a lot more like for 15 minutes now. Why didn't it show up before? What? Oh, you just didn't like share it, I guess. <laughs> I just saw the icon next to your name. It didn't you didn't share that you had subbed, so it didn't pop up in my activity feed. That's really funny. I was so confused. Um, yeah, I'm going to try to go to more of the Wednesday tournaments. I did miss your second place. I was wondering when you were going to notice that. Notice what? Notice the icon? Sure. Posture check. OK, you did call me while I was fully lounging in my chair. Yes. Um, I did miss your second place. I saw that you beat uh, Brian, right? Uh, I had maybe my worst Street Fighter session ever last night, two days ago. I forget when that was. The actual session was fine. I oh God, I just hit my mic. Sorry about that. I went like 50 50, but uh, literally f at least 50 percent to 60 percent of the people I played were Eds, and it still is like this. You beat Brian and Smokey and the Smokey beat you in Grants. Nice. Not nice that he beat you in grants, but Brian and Smokey are both good. So um, I I'm stuck in I'm in plat five, which is where everyone that's playing new characters gets placed into. So I'm playing all of the people who were masters, but are trying to get Ed to master. And it's just hell. <laughs> it sucks. Uh, so I am in the spot where genuinely like 60 percent of the people I play are playing Ed right now. Um, over the last month, I actually did the math and it's been over 30 percent. That one session was just wild, though. And it's fine. I don't mind playing Ed, but I do mind playing Ed that much time for that many times in a row is not fun. It was interesting to get to grands on winner's side. Yeah, nice. I've I've gotten to grands at tournaments before, but never on winners. I've always made it through losers and never won. I've never won a full paid bracket. Um, I think I've gotten second at a few PM events. Very rare, but I've done it like twice. Usually I get lucky. <laughs> at least you have good. Yeah, no, I feel better about that. It's just this. I, I'm getting knowledge checked really hard still. I, I feel like I have good ed knowledge, but then I will like someone will be like, you can't do this one thing and I'm going to hit you. It's like, you're right, but I just want to play gets literally anything else right now. <laughs> Um, actually, that's going to be a, a if I have time, we'll see how the stream goes after I do the other stuff. I want to do a, an analysis, kind of kind of a joke, kind of real on character diversity between Street Fighter and Melee, because I wish I'd done this pre patch, but I didn't get it. I didn't just it was lazy and I didn't finish the video I was working on in time um, because my theory is that I feel like I fight more characters. I, I fight more characters and see more character diversity playing ranked melee, a game that has a very definitive. These are the best eight characters and you never should play these bad ones. And I still will see a ro low tier way more frequently than like I haven't seen a Lily in months on Street Fighter. And so that's kind of my my thing is I Maybe I turn it in video and I talk about character balance versus like culture, because I think the worst character in Street Fighter is significantly better than some of the low tiers in Melee. But I will see the low tiers in Melee more often on ranked than I will see the low tiers in Street Fighter. And I just think it's this very weird, interesting phenomenon. Um, at the very least, it'll be a funny spreadsheet stream as I do like an hour of each game. Yeah. Uh, I should pull some stuff up here. I want to talk about the recent 
commentary discourse. So with Street Fighter, most of the good characters already got to master. You mean for you or just in general? I'm saying like as a culture, you see more people who are straight up like mid tier mains in Melee. I have several friends that are Donkey Kong mains. I have several friends that are mains of like Link and like pretty bad characters. And then in and you see them in brackets, you see them on ranked, you see them on unranked. But then in Street Fighter, it's just like, wow, I've played five chun Li's, or sorry, not chun Li's. You do see some chun Li's, but it's like, wow, I played five Kami's and five Luke's and five Ken's and that's it. Except right now, for some reason, it's Ed's. <laughs> All right, let me do some searching here. One sec. We're going to talk about commentary. Street Fight is less character specific tech. That's weird, like Isis. Yeah, I do think that's part of it. I think in Street Fighter, if you play a character, you're probably as long as it's not like the grappler or the, the zoner like Dalsim or whatever, you're able to transfer your skills quicker to a just a better character. So there's a little bit less character loyalty, I think. It's not surprising to see people playing the co common characters in all the same place. Yeah, that's those those play charts are what made me think about doing this, actually, because I saw that and then was like, huh, why do I see random weird low tiers in Smash way more than I do in Street Fighter, even though the Street Fighter low tiers are significantly better? All right, let me do some not prep, we're still going to talk, but um, there was a bunch of commentary discourse a couple days ago. This is not new discourse. And so I'm going to try to pull up some of it because I think it leads to a much more interesting topic that is not It, it is for for spoilers here. The commentary discourse was basically, do you need to be good at a game to commentate it? And I think if you believe that you have fundamentally misunderstood what the point of commentary is. But I do think that if you don't understand what it's like to compete, that it's also not good for commentary. So there's like a push and pull. And I want to talk about that. I think that's a much more interesting topic than like my commentators all need to be able to make top 24 at a major. And if they can't, they're trash because that is just wrong. That is actually just wrong. I feel like I'm not. Did I bump my? I should be up slightly higher. I don't like that. The top one sec. <laughs> We're going to fix my camera. I feel like there's a chance I just break my camera more, actually. All right, I don't know if that fixed it or not. I feel I'm, it's still cutting off more of the top of my head than I want. Oh, what's up, Pete? I found a good day slash topic to lurk. Yeah. I'm going to this. This is just the, the first topic. The second one is probably much less interesting to you, but it will be a lot more interesting to the people that follow me on YouTube. And then I'm just going to play games and do whatever. That's if I still feel like streaming at that point. Um, yeah, uh, quick before I get into all of this, while I'm still pulling everything up. Um, there's this very interesting thing with all of this that actually no I don't want to talk that yet that'll just be part of me talking later sure um why did I lose the I hate this I'm like losing the post that I'm trying to pull up right now so I can share them on screen this will be very mogul mail uh obviously Ludwig isn't the first person to do quick fire commentary on a topic, but 
this is if this goes onto YouTube later, which it probably will. That's part of what I'm doing. This this will be much more. I'm not going to be doing. Oh, no, not the discourse. Oh, yes. That's what I'm talking about, though. I'm talking about it in a very different direction. I'm we're very quickly going to veer off of the. Uh, fake discourse and get into what I think is a much more interesting topic about it. Um, it's still so dumb. Yeah, it is dumb. That's why I'm going to talk about the interesting thing. Uh, I should just pull up Skiff because he was unfortunately the center of a lot of this. And then that'll hopefully get me to be the first one here yes also the fact that this tweet sparked because someone misunderstood what he was talking about but that's a different topic also for for pete skiff is the center of this drama isn't that fun skiff the person who's probably going to be moving here I know good commentators that can't play well. I know commentators. Yeah, I, I that's a lot of what we're going to talk about all of this. All right. Whee, there we go. Oh, that's my act. That's just Squiff's, Squiff's thing. All right, here. So before I get into this, uh, like I said, I'm going to try to do some more like quick videos on YouTube that aren't they will have some production, but I'm not going to do like a fully edited intro slide and title sequence and all of that stuff. These I'm going to try to do some quicker things so that it's not over a month between each of my like video essay, bigger topic things. Uh, and so stuff like what is the purpose of commentary and uh, going to try to talk about what I things that I'm picking up from like the first few in-person Rivals tournaments that have happened, that kind of stuff as like quicker, small things that I can chop up and then it's not going to be the same. I'm still probably going to do some voiceover, all of that kind of stuff. But yes, this started from this tweet, which is talking about a commentator called Skiff. So wait, let, let's let's do the the big thing here. One sec, one sec. That's just the wrong thing entirely. I clicked on the wrong button. Where, where is it? There we go. There we go. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. <laughs> Please post that. You mean the, the scene that is just my chat box because of how my thing is? <laughs> This is why I'm a YouTuber now and not a I am a streamer, but I'm not a let's do the big thing and then going dark to the wrong screen. Yeah, it's perfect. All right, so I don't I'm not going to frame this like a YouTube intro. Uh, maybe we'll figure it out. We'll do it live. I'm a streamer and I do that, too. Yeah, it happens. Um. I definitely view myself as a YouTuber who will stream every once in a while and not a streamer, if that makes sense. Though I will probably do some more of this kind of thing. If I can do go live like once a week and be like, all right, I got a YouTube video out of me talking about the current events and whatever. Though I want to talk about topics that are more evergreen. Like this one, actually. Good. I'm going to segue. That's a good transition. I want to talk about topics that are more evergreen because this is like the fifth time we've had this conversation about what is the point of commentary. Specifically, we get into these conversations that are this person shouldn't be a commentator because they're bad. They're not good enough to be on the mic. They're not good enough at the game. Not that they are bad at talking. They don't know the game well enough. They don't have the right knowledge. And then you get the opposite side. You get all the people who are yelling like, no, you don't need to be good at the game to do commentary. Commentary is its own skill. You, it is a public speaking. It is extemporaneous speaking. It is being able to talk off the top of your head, entertain an audience, all of that kind of stuff. And I think the real answer is somewhere in the middle. That's what I want to talk about right now, though. I will say spoilers. 
it's somewhere in the middle, but that line is much closer on the you do not need to be good at the video game to be a commentator. However, I don't think someone who never has played a game or someone who has only studied a game in theory will be a very good commentator. I think they'll be able to be passable, but they're not going to be amazing. So this was all spurred on by this tweet. Uh, from somebody I do not know, and that's fine. Commentators at Skiff's level talk massive. I assume the word shit, but it just says talk massive, despite being the most replaceable asset in the community. These people couldn't do anything as players, so they hop on the mic and give surface level analysis and play by play with zero charisma. And it works because the bar is that low. And then it's a screenshot of Skiff's smash data where you find out that he has a 32% set count. And you know what? I do not care. Cool. That means the person goes like one and two, whatever. Uh, it's also a quote tweet of Tim. This was not related to commentary at all. This person just saw this and thought that it was about commentary, and it's just not. They just wanted an excuse to shit talk on Skiff. Uh, and then, well, works isn't true, whatever. Um, so some different things that I saw about this. I saw people that were. It, it was not just this person is bad at playing the game and therefore they shouldn't do commentary. I saw a lot of things that were, that were saying this person doesn't know specific game information. Um, one thing that Walt started getting called out on is someone was like, Walt doesn't know the percent for Puff's, like when Puff dies. It was specifically Walt doesn't know the percents when Puff dies to Fox grab with up throw up air. And guess what? The entire thing ended up being a misunderstanding about did you mean 55% on grab or 55% on hit? I hate this. It doesn't matter either way. Puff is a round kill percent. Cool. And if you say, oh, this won't kill here and it doesn't, whatever. Um, that one I just really didn't like because it literally turned into it was a disagreement on if the person might be for hit or after hit. Because that's dumb. Uh, I want to get this off the screen because I don't like having all of this shit on here. It's just a bunch of hate for no reason. Uh, so this led to a bunch of people talking about a lot of different things. You got people that were talking trash. You got people that were sharing their win rate. My favorite one was this. Uh, Stu quit Twitter. Uh, good for Stu, by the way, for not being on Twitter. Stu quit Twitter, but asked me to post this with the caption, suck my nuts, assholes, which is a good James Chen quote. Let's be real. And that is Stu with his 62% win rate. Uh, Stu also could have chosen the fact that he's top 50 in the world in Project M now. Oh, we're all huge Stu fans. We all are. What's up, Jet? Jet, you're a NorCal commentator, right? I know I've seen your name before, at least. More for alt, if I'm... So... Uh, yes, we are all huge Stu fans here. Stu has been on the stream many times, <laughs> uh, both playing against me or testing games with me, or he's also been on my game show. Um, I really liked this. It was besides the point. I just wanted to show it. Alt hopefully rivals Stu. Rivals Stu so good. Uh, Alt, uh, Stu also could have chosen the fact that he was top 50 in PM. He could have chosen a lot of things. He's gotten a lot of good results. Uh, I posted jokes, mainly, um, because I have learned to just ignore all of this. It doesn't matter. I don't. Me putting my name into the hat won't do anything, but we're going to talk about a much more interesting thing today, which is I think that people that get upset at commentators for not being get the good at the game are telling on themselves for what they think the point of commentary is. And this is the same as people who are like yelling at the people who used to yell at John Madden for not understanding how football works, that kind of thing. Uh, I go into it more here. And after this, I'm going to stop reading it. This is not a PowerPoint presentation. Um, the job of commentary and the reason we have commentary at all is to tell the story of the tournament that's taking place. There's a lot of different things that this already changes because the story of a tournament like Genesis 
especially if you're doing Genesis Top 8, is so different than the story of your local or the story of your, like, a, a like, bar tournament or even a Smash and Splash or Riptide, sorry. Let's use Riptide as <laughs> a much better example, where, like, people are hanging out and they're chilling. Or a good example is I'm going to be at Smash Camp in, like, a month and a half, whatever that time is. And Smash Camp is an event that's known for having a big party atmosphere. I'm going to tell the story of Smash Camp way different than I'm going to tell the story of Genesis. It could be the exact same play on the screen. Smash Camp is going to be way more jokes, a lot more lighthearted, a lot like it's going to be poking fun at the players. It's going to be all that kind of thing. Genesis is going to be why this is important and why this has gravitas and why this matters. So you're telling the story of your tournament and the tools that you have at, at, have at your Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to read my own tweet, which is weird. Also talk to chat. Let's just ignore my tweet. Let's go back to the full screen. Where'd we go? Where'd we go? Bam. The, like, you're telling the story of the tournament and you are telling those stories using the tools you have available. And those tools are everything from stats, like player win rate, character pick rate, what are matchup charts, everything like that. You also have things like player head-to-head -head history. You have things like competitor background. Who, what region is this person from? Who have they trained with? Who's their practice partners? You can talk about player mentality or habits. You can do things that are like, this person does not like to play rock, paper, scissors. They will go to the ledge every single time. And if you don't call it out, they will get back for free and it'll look like they washed you. And if you do, you're going to three stock them. Uh, it's all of this. And none of these matter. Like, none of these things take into account your knowledge of the game. I could do all of those kind of things on commentary without knowing what game I'm talking about. I would be shocked if you didn't know what game you're talking about and still had intimate knowledge of like a community in a scene. That's a different. Well, you know what? That's not a different topic that's related. I think that if you're just upset about a commentator's win rate, you are missing the forest for the trees because they could be bad at the game because their hands don't work super well, or they could be really bad at taking their knowledge and applying it, or they could have a bad mentality. I personally have a huge issue with tournament nerves. Uh, it's really funny. I was so much more nervous to play on stream in pools at a major than I was to commentate Genesis top eight for rivals. No clue why that should not be true. I should be definitely the other way around, but that is how my nerves work. I am way more nervous to play on stream than I am to commentate. And so my play when I'm on stream feels really bad. <laughs> uh, you can actually watch the ones where I've like missed every tech, uh, where I've not been able to wave dash suddenly, whatever. Um, but, and there's the, something that I was talking about with Stude uh, in a, just a Discord chat that we're in, is everyone that was saying you don't, because then you had people that were taking the opposite side, which is you don't need to know the game at all to commentate. I also don't think that's true. Uh, there is some sort of like knowing the humanity of a person there's some sort of knowing the mental process that someone's going through because you know what it's like to be a competitor. I'm fine if someone's retired and they haven't played in forever. Like, I think Kony might be the best Smash commentator or one of the best Smash commentators, even though I don't play alt. And he doesn't compete in alt, not anymore. He competes in like the first three months of any game. Uh, but he used to, and he knows what it's like to come really close to victory and then drop it. He knows what it's like to think that you were supposed to win and you get upset. He knows what it's like to also make a big upset. Knowing that kind of thing and being able to translate that to a viewing audience is also really important. And you don't, you can't fully grasp that unless you've done some amount of competing. Uh, there also is the element of if someone doesn't know any game knowledge, I, I don't think someone needs to memorize all the percents for every kill setup because that's silly. Even top players don't know all of that. Why would they? Why are we expecting commentators to know that? Smash commentators and 99% of FGC commentators, this is not a paid gig. You are paid for that gig, but you are not, sorry. 
it is not a career gig where that is the only thing you do. Everyone else has multiple jobs. <laughs> or they are a commentator and a content creator, or you are a commentator and I work some other job that allows me to travel, whatever. Uh, I need to go through this playlist because a lot of this is old and I don't like it anymore. Uh, so you also should know what it's like to compete. And I think knowing what it's like to compete and knowing what it's like to grind and try to get better at a game is a huge factor. But that doesn't mean you actually have to get good. <laughs> Every once. Like if someone has never won a tournament set and they don't have like hand problems or like a huge mental block or whatever, they probably don't know enough about the game and that's OK. I think competing in TCGs or trading card games uh, sorry, I'm, I forgot I don't have chat on the screen right now. I'm just talking to the screen. Jet says, I think competing in TCGs at the top level extensively helped my commentary a lot. I totally agree with that. Um, I've not competed in TCGs, but I've competed in other things even before I learned about Smash. I did national level competitions for debate and forensics, the public speaking forensics, not the dead body forensics. Uh, and so I know what it's like to prepare a piece and to have to... Uh, to prepare a piece and have to like learn and grind and practice and practice and practice. I put in so many hours in order to do my performances. And I know what it's like to feel like you've nailed it. And I know what it's like to be like, oh, I fucked up. I did not do well enough right now. Um, I think the things I learned in debate and forensics actually helped me way more for commentary than it did. I think they helped me way more for commentary than things like getting good at a video game did. I think they are both important, but I think knowing how to think on the fly, knowing how to give a presentation, knowing how to like what to do with your hands when you talk, like all of those kind of things. Um, there's a reason that public speaking is like the number one fear in the US, or at least was a decade ago. I don't know those that data anymore. Public speaking is really scary for a lot of people, and I think to ignore that and be like anybody can do commentary is just factually wrong. Um, the other side is that you can know all of, like, like, let's take the other side of this. You could know all of the details about a game. You could be the number one player in the world. And if you cannot express that, you're not going to be good on the mic. Uh, I saw someone post about this and then get clowned on, and I don't think they should have. I saw someone post like, yeah, I hate it when a top player gets on the mic and then says, ah, I wouldn't have done that. And then is silent for a minute. And people are like, I've never seen that. And I don't know who those people are because I have 100 percent seen that. It doesn't happen nearly as much as it used to, but it used to be a thing that places would be like, oh, let's get this person to hop on the mic. I've heard you two can do commentary. I've heard of like a bunch of different top players do commentary in different games. Some of them. Like Mango is great. He's very charismatic. He knows how to speak because he has a lot of streaming experience. Other people are going to be way more analytic, analytical. I can talk. I can't believe I'm stumbling over my words so much for everything I'm saying right now. I just did commentary with Mewtwo King this week. I've done commentary with Mewtwo King before. Uh, it is painful. It is what it is. I think I did fine. But it's it's not like doing normal commentary. Um, I also, though, did commentary with Mewtwo King in P plus during the like online only COVID era. Uh, and I just had to keep finding nice, not correct him, but finding nice ways to be like, actually, this hasn't been true in a couple of patches. This currently has asked how this thing goes, because he just kept stating all of his knowledge from like the 3.02 days as if it was still currently true. The pro the OK, from Fluffy Corns, the big problem with getting on the mic is that it puts you out for criticism over X, Y, Z, even if it's ultimately meaningless sometimes. And I think that puts a barrier between it. Yeah, I, I've absolutely seen that. If I'm understanding what you're saying correctly, I have. People will get on the mic and then just get flamed because they said one wrong thing, and that sucks. I get like, don't put someone on a, like a national top eight if they're not going to be able to hold their own. But I've seen people get flamed for like local commentary 
when it genuinely might be your first time ever getting on the mic and you have to. And I'm talking about genuinely flamed, not constructive criticism, because there's such a big difference. And I think everyone needs to learn from somewhere. Uh, as an example from my local scene, uh, Zen. I don't think people realize that playing and commentating. Yeah, I mean, that's everything I'm talking about right now is that they require different skill sets. Uh, Zen is currently a commentates Melee, Dota. I think he commentates a couple other things. Uh, I remember his some of his very first commentary sessions for Melee, and he just wasn't good. He needed more game knowledge. He needed to be able to present himself better. Different games also require different cadences. The way you speak for a game of Dota or League like any MOBA is going to be way different than the different than the cadence you use to commentate something like a Counter-Strike. Um, I've done Apex Legends commentary before once, and that was totally different because you had to just explain the general game state until you found a firefight. Um, even among fighting games, commentating Smash and commentating traditional fighters is very different. Uh, because things like Smash doesn't have, it has true combos. I'm trying to figure out the best way to say this. It Even the true combos still require things like DI and reaction and things like that. So you are, a lot of Smash commentary is talking about punish game. And it's talking about, oh, they picked this thing up that's really good. They did whatever. Traditional fighting games, unless someone does something wild, it's a lot of the same combo routes because you know that you're, uh, 5P is always going to lead into, you know, your 6K. You, you know that your medium punch is always going to do a target combo into your heavy kick. And so that's when you get the, like, yipes just doing, making noise. The uh, uh, on, like, the pa pacing of the hit. Or you will see someone, uh, say Jam tends to do this a lot, is the punish will start the combo will start and he'll be like that was a good opener and then use it as a chance to rewind and be like he he was able to get this started because he had a read on this thing and they'll talk about the neutral while the combo is going on because you know what the combo is always going to work that way unless they fuck it up <laughs> like did they drop the combo then you should talk about it did they use a really interesting way of managing their meter you should talk about that but the, the cadence of commentary is different from game to game. And I think that's really interesting. Um, this is kind of a side tangent now. But those are all public speaking skills and learning how to talk about the things that you enjoy. I like doing commentary because I like sharing the things that I'm passionate about. I what, The thing that I'm maybe the most proud of from my commentary is the number of people that have told me, like, I started playing this game because you talked about it. And that's the same. That's probably why I do YouTube videos as well. The people that have told me I backed the Rivals 2 beta or I got into Rivals 1 or I've had mate like PM players tell me that I finally got them to play Melee or the other way around. Like <laughs> I've I've heard at least one person from every game that I cast tell me that I'm the reason that they've started playing it, which is it was wild. I thought it was crazy the first time I heard that. That's awesome. Yeah, I love that from Fluffy Corns. It is pretty cool that different games commentate differently as if it's a visible extension. I think it is. Take another. I would not have backed Rivals 2 if it was not for you. Well, thank you. To be fair, you also came over to my house to try the the demo when I had it, <laughs> when I had access to that still. So that maybe have been a more direct one. But yeah, it is. Yeah, I got you to care. Yeah, sure. Um, I don't exactly know where I'm going with. I didn't write this down and I'm not. I should have written some stuff down for like what I wanted to talk about for this, because I that's what I do for YouTube videos. I think that defeats the purpose of doing it as a stream. I am going to go back to the normal. Thing here um, so that you guys can see yourselves again. But yeah, I think. To just talk about player skill is to ignore the entire rest of commentary. You need to be able to do all of these public speaking skills. You need to be able to talk about player history. You need to be able to talk about uh, like I would much rather have someone point out a cool player habit 
like, hey, Mango is really going for these double dips on this specific type of DI right now. It does require some game knowledge, but you also could be like, oh, that's the third double dip. He keeps hitting him with it. Uh, you know, Cake Assault keeps going high. I'm wondering when Siffy is about to start covering that. Like you can do whatever. I think talking about player habits is way more interesting than like, ah, uh, yes, that only works because he hit the fourth frame of this specific move and got this hitbox. Unless he's doing that one thing four times and then it's cool again. Also, a huge thing to talk about for commentary is the audience. I am commentating for the vast majority of viewers when I'm on the mic. That's how I prepare as well. And because I'm commentating for the vast majority of viewers, you have to remember that the average person watching does not know any frame data. You are not commentating for the professional players, for the top 30 players who are going to watch this later and then be like, I can't believe you got this thing wrong. Or the, the one I hate the most is not even when you got this thing wrong, you just talked too much about this other thing and you missed this cool, really niche specific tech. Great. If I can get 30 people who are brand new into a game and to care about it more. Whoever is one of the top 20 players in the world, they already clearly like the game. I do not need to sell them on why Guilty Gear is cool, on why Rivals is cool, on anything like that. But if I can sell somebody on like, hey, you should check out Street Fighter because there's this really cool thing and here's the really sick interaction that happened. Oh, that's that's cool. OK, let me tell me more about why you think this community is dope. I see so many random. Yeah, that's the other thing. The number of times someone's like, oh, you should have pointed this out. It's like I was I didn't have time. That that happened so fast and then it moved on. <laughs> Commentary is almost an accessibility feature. Huh. I've never thought about that that way, but I can see why I get the comparison. Literally every IC set. I mean, yes, I play ICs, so that is my time to just be like, no, I am going to be a nerd for a bit. IC's got so much tech, you are going to be very happy to hear about what my next video is then. No spoilers, but spoilers. It was very funny. I got tagged in that Icy's meme like 40 times today. Not that many. It was maybe like eight, but a lot today. Uh, and it's like, yes, the only reason I'm being tagged into this is because I play the character. But also literally the video that I'm waiting to make live is about Ice Climbers. So I, I cannot the you know what? I can't beat the allegations. Cold practice. No, nah, it's not that specific. I mean, it's very specific. It's not that uh, niche, I guess. It is something that I'm arguing is the most niche thing that is still seen in almost every tournament. And I don't think Colds or even PNTs are used that frequently. Base, I mean, so the title of the video, if you know ICs, you'll be able to to guess what this is. It's the melee tech you've seen a hundred times and never heard of. And then the thumbnail is this. And so salt, you will immediately know what this is. Other people might not. God, I made so many versions of this. Is this the one I was going to What? Which one did I go with for this video? I made a lot of versions of this thumbnail. Because I just couldn't quite get it to be what I wanted it to. Um. Yeah, here it is. All right, let's blow this up. Plane is about to depart. Oh, have a good trip. Have a great trip. Yeah. So Salt, I think you probably know what this is. The melee tech you've seen a hundred times and never heard of. The never heard of is not for Icy's mains. <laughs> 
but I've run polls about this. I've done other things. Nana loves that move, taunt. <laughs> the move is not taunt. Nana teeter nightmares. Yeah. Nah, it is, it is about the go desync. Because I am constantly shocked at how many people don't know. And they never have considered the fact that they just watched Ice Climbers start the game desynced. And I even did some research and through watching like top 50 Ice Climbers players. You can see the go desync in. It's just under two thirds of the sets they played. From a Fraser video. Oh, all right, that's fair. But yeah, if you watch like a top 100 Ice Climbers players, you see this tech in about 60% of sets and over a third of games. And yet when I ask people, I did a poll recently and 80% of people had no idea what it was. So that's what that's what the video is about. Fresh? Yeah. See, when you said Fraser, I was thinking Fraser, usually with an F. He did. It used to be PH and then people were pronouncing it wrong. Uh, is the person who does Melee Moments, the YouTube channel. And he actually did make a video about Nana, so I wasn't sure if it was in there. It was about Melee AI specifically. Yep, Go Desync is what that video is about. But I think it's a really good video. I'm excited for it. I feel like I didn't finish my thoughts on commentary, but I also just was kind of rambling. I don't know if that's going to become a YouTube video or not, mainly because I probably should have had more specific things. I literally might just take the thoughts that I that I just spit at everybody here and just quick write that up into a thing and just talk about it fast. That's probably easier. Like I got my thoughts out and now I'm going to actually explain it. But we'll see. We will see. I still don't know the best way to do quick videos that aren't like the big fully edited ones. The same way I would like, like I said, I want this to be my version of like Ludwig's mogul mail or or like watching a Say Jam video where it's clearly from his stream, but he took the time to be like, let me talk to you now. This is about a specific topic because stream brought it up. Now I'll go. Uh, give me one sec. I got to feed my dog quick. ERB. All right, we're back. He's, I don't even know if you can see him. Yeah, you can. Put like half of his meal into that toy. I can make this easier for you guys to see. It's a D20, and it has food inside it. 
I don't think you can see it well enough. This isn't worth it. All right. Back to me. Not my dog. Oh, that's the wrong screen. All right here. Okay, so something else outside of commentary I wanted to talk about is some of the events that have happened with the fact that we've been having different rivals in person events. So basically what I think I have learned from rivals having in person stuff. So let's pull up a couple brackets. I'm going to pull up the collision and Genesis start GG brackets. And I'm also going to show some streams or some like VODs. This is not anything deep. This is my initial impressions based on some of the stuff we've seen. Oh God, where is Rivals 2? Where is Rivals 2? That's the wrong game. Here, Rivals 2. Okay, Rivals 2, top 48. Start GG. Collision. Bam. Also, let's just do top 32. And then I had a couple of very specific things. Collision 2024 Rivals. A couple of these I haven't seen, but I'm sure they came up, and so that's why we're going to go over them. I have a couple of thoughts about characters. I have a couple of thoughts about the kinds of people that are doing well in Rivals 2 so far. And then there's just some sets that were really sick. Let's be real. This MSB. And then one thought on a stage, actually. All right. So this is Genesis. In fact, let's pull up the Genesis top six. The first big thing I want to go over is the people that are doing well in this game. So Genesis top six was ZB, a Rivals player, Kusi, a Rivals player, Ion, who is a PM player, Thunders, who is a PM player, Youngblood, who gets honorary both, uh, is PR'd in PM and is also one of the devs for Rivals, and Leffen, a melee player. And then if we go back to top 32, let's just go through everybody. Rivals, I don't know who Hayes is. PM, Rivals, Melee, Rivals. Sego plays like everything, but we're going to say Rivals. Bio DQ'd, I guess. Rivals, Rivals, I don't know. Rivals, PM, I don't know. Dan, and Rivals. Is there any big ones to point out here? Deer made, okay. Oh wait, no, that was someone playing as Deer because of DQs. Yeah, none that are huge. Doc Lobster is a Melee player that lost to a top 50 Rivals player. I'm surprised that plushie lost so early. Yeah, nothing crazy here, but I think it's what's important is also looking at top six. 
Uh, the fact that it is rivals and PM players. And I've been saying since I tested the game at not this Genesis, but the one before that for like 20 minutes. I played for like an hour. That's not true. That this game feels like it's a combination between rivals and PM. Also to note is that HDR players are doing really well in rivals two brackets already. In fact, I lost to an HDR player in losers. Turns out they were uh, didn't have enough activity, but would have been top 50 in the recent HDR rankings. And every HDR player is telling me that this feels extremely similar. And if we go here, and what I think is really interesting is if we look at this top six, that is Cake again, so Rivals, Switch, PM Player, MSB, Rivals, Cherry is actually Rivals, she is Coda, also with something pizza before, she's changed her name a lot. Uh, Average Alex did really well, and I don't know where they're from, so we're actually going to pull their thing up. I don't know Miffy either. Average Alex, full profile. What games do they play? They like Dragon. OK, they're an alt player or HDR, one of the two. Alt. All right. Cool. They did really well. They also do very well in all. Cool. And then. I don't know who this is. I'm always so scared to pull up someone's Twitter for this kind of thing, because who knows? Organized competed in melee singles and P plus. Oh. Cool. They played like everything. They're kind of like me. Melee, P plus, Rivals 2, Giant Melee, 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 P plus. OK, I get the vibe. I get the vibe. But yeah, right now it is very clear, at least from the first few in-person tournaments, that Rivals players and P plus players are doing really well, but also that a bunch of other people are like Melee people are still doing well. Obviously, alt people and HDR people are doing well. Uh, you get a lot of different things going on. But I think the big ones right now is early on Rivals and P plus players. Rivals players are still doing well. I think there's a lot of talk about like, oh, they won't know how to shield. They won't know how to do all of this different stuff. And that's clearly just not true. Uh, maybe defense is a little bit weaker, but definitely people are fully able and like, it did not take long to realize how to hold the shield button. Um, something that a lot of people have talked about for other games, and we just don't really see enough new Smash games, I feel like, is in most fighting games, people learn how to optimize offense way before we're able to optimize defense. That is just a consistent thing. And so I am not shocked when people are saying that Rivals 2 feels like it's extremely punish heavy. I'm not shocked that people are able to do that, and then they just get hit and clipped. It is way easier to optimize offense than defense, and defense always takes longer. This is true in Street Fighter VI. It is true in Tekken 8 right now. It's true in a lot of games. All right. And then... What did I do? In fact, let's turn the music off. What's up, Eon? So I wanted to specifically find some of the videos that had MSB and then to start. OK, here's one. My second big takeaway right now, other than it is a lot of rivals and P plus players, is stop letting Crag take you to Hyperborean Harbor or however you pronounce the name of that stage. Stop letting them go there. Oh my God, it is so good. Let's scroll here. Here. Yes, <laughs> yeah, I got it. As we see right there, oh my God. I think MSB might even lose this game. I don't care. Stop letting Craig's go here. What? 
Why was I able to scroll? Okay. I'm gonna. We're gonna watch this, but I will be pausing a bunch. So if you don't know, if you're someone here who doesn't know Rivals, MSB has been like a top 10 player for years. Don't think he is right now, but he's always a threat. Uh, but he's all. He's like the grandfather of Craig. Switch is the goat of PM. He's the mango of PM, basically. The same way that people call Cake the mango of uh, Rivals. Not currently, and uh, never was the best player, but I was always super hype and people love him and he's a good friend. Okay. So the thing about this stage, uh, and I'm actually gonna turn the commentary down a little bit, just so that I can talk. The thing about this stage is that this is the only one that doesn't have a wall where the ledges are. The wall is in the middle. It is closer. So the first time we see someone go off stage is when I'm here. So if you look here, the ledge is where Maple just grabbed. It won't let me. Yeah, the ledge is where. Come on. Yeah, Maple grabbed there. The wall isn't until you get to that blue ice. Because Craig can make a pillar down below and make his own platform. He can shark through that and not worry at all. This stage is terrifying. Don't let Craig take you here. So what you're going to see MSB do a lot here. Is do his uh, jump canceled. It's kind of like a jump cancel side B. You cancel it with shielding instead. But Craig does this like hook. And he just like flings himself forward. And he does that into the wall, gets the wall jump, and then grabs the ledge. And you're going to see this. He's going to recover from ludicrous spots because of this. Like that. What the fuck was that? But yeah, my, my entire thesis right now. Stop letting Craig go to the stage. Boom, boom, boom. Wall jump up. He landed from off stage on the other side of the middle platform. Look at this. He's going to land on the right side of the platform. Can you imagine any other thing where you can recover to the middle like that? All right, he landed. He's going to set up again. I, I honestly think he could have gone to the wall and still wall jumps, but whatever. You can't still kill Craig. It also feels like that understage is really F for Maple. I think this is Maple's worst stage. Um, I've also heard Dan say that as well. But we're going to watch several of MSB's games because he did this to everybody. And there was points where I started freaking out while watching this. Just shocked that anybody is letting Craig go to this stage. Even if Switch wins this, which I think he does. Okay, I'm literally, I only care about the offstage right now. But that, but also, like, put a rock, like, you could set a rock down on that stage, so they can't up B through it quite as easily now without breaking it. Like, there's stuff you can do. Wall jump. Like, look at this. Look at this entire sequence. Hyperborean Harbor. Stop letting him go here. He's going to wall jump out. Air dodge. Side B in. Jump. And then side B back up. And the commentators are freaking about how cool it is. And I'm just like, switch. We need you need to learn. You got to learn today, boy. Okay. Look at this again. Look at this recovery. He's the only person that can do this. Everybody else could air dodge and wall jump and do that kind of thing. He's the only one that can, like, make a pillar and set up a projectile and then do it to you. Foop, foop. Because he's got that big side B jump now. 
Other characters can do some stuff. Crag on this is probably Crag's best stage. Every before Crag was like, oh, he kills hard, so you don't want him to have small blast sense. I don't think you care about the blast sense anymore on this. You're so willing to be like, let me just fly around. <laughs> also, that. Watch this. Sends the shards down through the stage. No one else can do that. No one else has a projectile that can go through the stage like that. We got the snipe to the blade action coming through. I don't know. Yeah, but my my three big takeaways from this tournament and Genesis were one. Rivals and PM players are kind of on top right now, and that's really cool to see. Two, don't let Craig go here. And then three is that people get cheesed by new characters, and that's just what happens. Lox is very cheesy right now. Fleet can do some very cheesy stuff right now in very different ways. I think fleets are much harder to do. Fleet, I just want to show some cool fleet combos. I'll be real. Cherry and Cake were both super sick. Okay. Yeah, look at this recovery again. That that was more normal. That was more normal. And MSP still loses. Let's be clear. MSP lost. And I don't care because that was just dumb. That this is just a good set. Here, I have not watched this. We are pulling this up purely so that I can see if he does it again. I did not watch this set. I only watched top six. Oh, I forgot he was playing Claren for a lot of this tournament, so this might not actually happen in the set. Is there a Hyperborean Harbor? I need to make sure that's how it's pronounced. There's not. Okay. I, this, I'm sure it's a good set. We just... I. I'm not streaming super long today, so I, I want to use my time. All right. This one, and this will also transition me into the next thing, which is Fleet's really sick right now, and I think Fleet's going to get much stronger as people figure out how to optimize her. I don't think... I think people are right that Fleet isn't good currently. I think she's lower... I, I also think this saying isn't good is a big misnomer in Rivals 2, where I think the worst character is still like maybe B tier at worst. Um, I think Fleet's one of the lower of the seven to eight characters. But I think that as we optimize and figure out good setups for her, she's going to be disgusting. I think the, the big question was, is she going to be fast enough? Cherry is a player that she used to be Coda. She used to be have several tags. She's a player that has been known for. Like she she made top 50. She's definitely the like tech monster demon to use in punish game kind of thing and less on like the most precise neutral. So the fact that she's playing fleet makes me really excited. OK, because it still doesn't really make sense. I'm just going to chill and then I want to pause. Also, that recovery, I don't know why I've never seen anyone else do that yet. I don't want to mute them, but I can't find a good level of not muted. All right here, just floats out there, waits, sweet spots, really smart. I'm going to skip forward so I can see some of the. God, she's playing so aggressive there. And that's the thing. I think a lot of people are like, ah, fleet optimal fleet play is going to be good zoning. I think fleet has to zone a bit. And I said this in my fleet video, but she doesn't only going to do that. Also, this movement's really sick. This. Oh, that's a OK. I just realized that. If I clicked on volume last, it's just in volume here. Cherry's also the only person I've seen doing some of this really cool movement. I'm going to suck at this game, but it's so clean. And uh, yeah, I don't you don't have to be good at a game to enjoy it. I'm going to be thoroughly mid tier and I'm OK with that. 
I'm going to be really good for like the first month of the game. That's how it usually is. So watch this setup that she tries to go for. Where is it? Where is it? I. Oh, OK, it's just that movement. I think the fact that she can do float out of her side being down B or sorry, up being down B angled means we're going to see some really cool stuff. All right, whatever we forward through. We don't care about Craig anymore. MSB has always been good. We've been know that we are specifically trying to pull out cool fleet stuff so that I can talk about it. That was weird. Very great tech, though. I heard Walt call it out, too. Come on. Oh, if she had hit that faster. Yeah, I think all of the different movement things that Fleet can do, she's going to get really tricky. She might not be the fastest character, but it's going to be like Peach and Melee. Not in the same way. Like, but but where you can use float to speed certain things up in interesting ways, even if it's not like palms float where that's your main goal. I also right now, someone asked me earlier my, who my main is. My main is Zetter right now. Uh, Zetter was my original main in Rivals 1 before Ori came out. Uh, I really hate playing Zetter in the locks during my time playing the game at Genesis. So or when I had access uh, during the Kickstarter. So I think I'm going to be like a fleet pocket or not even a pocket. I don't like the term pocket. Just a Zetter fleet duo. Um, I really have enjoyed playing fleet. I think she's super sick and I think she will help with some of the matchups where I don't feel comfortable getting into the fray as Zetter as much. Look at those techs. Um, I don't think it was in this game. Yeah, also, Cherry's use of side B is so good in this set. She, like, fully cuts off certain angles or traps people, and it it's so smart, and I want to steal so much of it. It has changed some of the way I've, I've thought about that. I'm surprised that didn't break. Oh, God. 202. OK. All right. Yes, I forgot MSB did this. Uh, also, some people are saying that Claren's not good. I don't know if that's true. Claren definitely is different than Rivals 1, though, because uh, and I heard this from SBS Rivals 1 because it was pixel art. They were able to do a lot more like squash and stretch stuff. And in this game, when Claren swings her sword, it's a 3D model. So the sword itself stays at a very consistent diameter. It swings and it's always at that same spot versus like like Claren's down air in Rivals 1 has a huge smear frame that all counts as hitbox. It's it, this like, look at that, that movement into the if she had just hit that grab. This is the kind of stuff that when I see and I as we get the game more optimized, I'm so excited. Because that could have been into a grab, too. Does that mean Rivals Dare is? Yeah, it's definitely worse. You're not you can't shark through platforms quite the same way you could in Rivals 1. It's still good. It's still a very good move. It's just not as good. Uh, now Zetter's Dare is the best one. Zetter's dare is a war crime. Zetter's dare hits above him. You can spike somebody up here because Zetter does this and then pulls down. Like that. If she had hit this read or done literally anything else, this is the kind of stuff I see, and I'm just really excited to see what the future fleet is. If she wanted that so badly. Very aware from Peter, right? Peter does have access. 
It's so funny. I had people assume that I got into the stress test. I'm like, no, they just, it was 1% of the people. I didn't pay for the big access. I didn't pay the 2K in order to have dev testing access. See, so yeah, I don't think it's that Claren is bad. I think it's that Claren is just some of the hitboxes are slightly different. And so you have to like readjust how you play. He farmed the last dev tourney. I didn't actually see how it ended. I didn't realize he won. I'm not surprised. Was it? Did he play locks? I don't remember suddenly. Also, I was hearing people say that locks is bad, and then I heard people say that he was broken, and then I heard people say he was bad again. Um, the only money matches I lost at Genesis were to devs. I lost money matches to Dan and Youngblood. Uh, the Dan one was really funny because Dan lost in bracket and I tweeted out like, hey, I want to play a bunch of money matches to get like serious sets in. Dan lost in bracket and then immediately saw me. He's like, hey, Sam, let's money match. And it's just like, Dan, you made the game. This doesn't seem fair. <laughs> also, Youngblood money matched me one and then wouldn't take my money. Dan definitely took my money. Dan did not care. <laughs> But yeah, I only lost to devs, clarins, and loxodonts. I didn't lose any sets in bracket or money matches to anybody else. No, that's not true. I lost to bunthers. I lost to club lights. Uh, but he also had access because he's part of the mogul moves crew that helped put on the, the testing. So he's been playing the game for a lot longer. But yeah, having Youngblood be like, no, I'm not going to take your money. It was a good set into... Dan immediately just being like, I, yeah, five bucks. <laughs> it's like, yep, because <laughs> I didn't question it. But yeah, I think Dan played me because he was tired of losing in bracket and he wanted to make sure he could play someone. We're going to go back. This is sick. Like this entire combo is the kind of stuff that I'm just so excited about. Also, well, let's see this quick clearing clip, too. I can't tell exactly how that happened lower. But yeah, we're going to see a, a sick fleet kill here. Boom, boom. Down air spike into the reed. So good. So good. I'm so sad that I don't have a clip of it. Uh, but I hit a kill as Zetter. So it fleets wind stock. If you hit her, when, when you have gotten hit and you have the wind on you. If you hit her, it puts it to her or if you reflect it like a parry. So I parried a fleet arrow. It put the wind on her and I comboed her as Zetter into a dunk off stage. And it was timed perfectly that she never left hit stun. The dunk happened off stage. She gets popped back up into another hit fall down air. I have never done a cooler combo and I didn't clip it. And I never will be able to show it again. Like it, it, this was a true combo double dunk through like the hit fall dare because of the wind stock. And. Like it, she wasn't recovering, it, it was so sick and I just I don't have a way to clip it because this game doesn't have replays and I do not have access anymore. And I'm very sad. And that's when I started recording my offline sessions, too. Okay. Also realizing that Nair is better than I thought. Like this. That kind of setup is what I'm really interested in learning more. Like seeing how fleets optimize some of this. Because I think there's a lot of like option coverage stuff. So you send that. That was like, that was so good. That was so good. Also, I see this kind of offstage play. And it tells me that everyone who is panicking about offstage not happening is just it, it, we're going to be all right. We're going to be OK. Look at this. 
bam, grabs, wall jumps up, we're still good. Because this is a game now where every single character can wall jump. Yeah, Cherry likes to do a lot of the... Uh, this is actually really cool. So Cherry does a lot of this. I'll side B at you. You're going to try to dodge through it. I'm just going to hit you. And you're either going to get hit by the next move, like a jab or a forward tilt, or you're going to get caught by the tornado. And then, because there's the wind, waits, knows that the pop means that you're still in shield stun, and then just grabs. Like, I think Fleet's got a lot of sauce and has a lot more mix-up potential than people were thinking. I also, she might be better in this patch, too. Let's be real. She might just have more stuff. I do know that before that tornado would have come out no matter what. And now if you hit her after the side B, but the tornado goes away. I need to test later to see if Clarion has any chain grabs. I don't think so. Which is interesting. Like chain grabs where you have to pummel between. Though she does have a 50-50 if you get the stun throw. So you better hope she doesn't hit B. Yep. And everyone's re gonna get really good at wall tacking that down air. So it seems really good right now, and it will be fine. <laughs> like I said, Punish is always a little bit faster in fighting games for people to get good at. I'm so happy Cherry's playing this game. She's been one of my favorite players for a long time to watch. I remember her uh, Sylph, I think Shovel Knight before that, like has a plethora of characters and they're all like it is so clear just from watching and that's like oh this is being piloted by cherry because you'll just see some wild fast tech and it's all <laughs> someone expect very hard into punish game good neutral but that's not the focus let's be real also you see a lot of that now you're seeing cherry go for a lot of like i'm gonna go out there and hit you and so you can't dodge this move because you're going to get caught by that was just funny looking okay what's funny is that cake did we cake played fleet for most of the bracket but said, if I'm smart, I will play Zetter. And I think that's because he has so much more experience as Zetter, not because Fleet is that much worse. I think Zetter's good right now. But I think that it's just I have years of experience on Zetter. Let's see, we're just kind of looking for cool Fleet stuff, so I'm going to keep moving forward. That happens. Uh, it just goes out. Yeah. I don't remember who wins this. Pretty sure it's MSP. Yeah, the, the spots that she's able to get tornadoes out to cover things are so good. Yeah. What was there was another. I think it was this one. I don't remember. Still, we're going to be getting into our next set. Nino, hello. Uh, strongs, grounded strongs with these aerial claps. But I'm pretty sure she loses this. 
Oh, God. Is it even a cool thing? No, it was literally an SD. Oh, it was not. Okay. God, recoveries are so good in Rivals 2 right now. Oh, that was the other thing I was going to say. Uh, recoveries are really good right now. So it tends to not be ledge guarding. You almost never see someone die because they grabbed the ledge. You'll see people try to go for ledge and then have to wall jump. But you, what you tend to see is a lot of like... Uh, you're going to grab ledge so they can't get that safety. And then you're going to have to cover them on stage somehow. So it's not like a rinse and maybe it'll be rinse and repeat later, but it's not yet. Um, I think Cake Assault did a really good job of some of that in some of his sets, too. So I saw him doing some really interesting recoveries with Zetter that I never thought of before. Just like ways to air dodge in after doing other moves. And yeah, I think actually killing someone off stage is really tricky still. All right. I don't think this set had what I was looking for in it. We can either watch more of this or we can do some other stuff, too. This is a quick set, and I don't remember seeing this, so we're just going to watch and see if... Uh, I'll wait, I'll wait. I will wait. I don't know. I was thinking... Because I wanted to... Uh, there's just some part of me that's like, what if I get the email to, that I can make this video live? But I haven't yet. How we feeling? How are we feeling? I realize I'm really hungry. I haven't had dinner yet. Um, I'm probably going to be done. I was thinking about streaming longer, but uh, I th think instead of that, I'm just going to do some more streams this week instead. Uh, I will take some of the stuff that I talked about and thought about in the stream and turn it into some videos later. So if you are watching on Twitch, make sure you follow me on YouTube because that is my main platform. Uh, much more about making videos. I just stream very sporadically. I'll stream like. I don't know, I think last month I streamed like literally only like four or five times in the month, but I did make like several videos. So that's my big push right now. Um, I'll type that into the Twitch chat. Uh, is it not working? My bot not working? All right, cool. My bot's not working. Whatever, you can find the links. It's it's everywhere. Uh, yeah, YouTube's kind of my big thing. I should have a video coming out in the next day or two. Uh, it is a melee video that I'm very excited about. Uh, and then I'm going to try to make that video about commentary. Both, I think, one about what I was saying earlier, what's the point of commentary, and then a video that is... I've had a few people ask me about what my experience was commentating top eight at Genesis. So I think that is definitely something I could talk about is like, unfortunately, I actually brought my camera, not my like, not this camera, but like a phone vlog camera set up to Genesis and then I never used it. Um, maybe I'll be able to do some of that stuff in the future. I kind of want to do that for Smash Camp. It feels a lot more low key, which is way more interesting to me than like a vlog where I'm like, look at all these things. Look what I did. Uh, yeah, I, I think a what my experience was and what it's like to prepare and commentate at something like Genesis, especially top eight, would be very interesting. But yeah, I will see you all later. I know it's a very short stream today. I'll do some bigger, longer ones later. Uh, I haven't streamed in like a month, so just got to get back into it. Anyways, see you all later. Uh, have a good night and goodbye.